Tanvir, uh, you uh, like you have a very interesting like career and also like education wise. So you are already like running Olympic for uh, in Bangladesh already, and I know like you are investing internationally already. So beca because I know you because we invested together in one of the companies Silicon Valley. So like uh, before, like I started investing in Bangladesh in 2013 with uh, like Dugdugi and uh, the startup weekend in that time. So. You guys, you started probably investing in GNR at the beginning with Nash. So, like after in that period, like I end up spending uh, investing is almost like eight to ten companies already in last three four years. But you guys also invested a lot. Like uh, I was really uh, like uh, inspired to see like in 2016 especially you invested in a lot of new companies in. Bangladesh, especially like the way you invested in Pathao and the way, like the, in the game development company you are investing. So, what like when you had access to invest in anywhere in the world, like in in Bay Area, you you also have like good access in Europe. So, what made you uh, to choose to invest in Bangladesh this heavily? I think there's a lot of things that contribute to that. Uh, Bangladesh's population size is one of them. 160 million people is a very interesting opportunity, especially for a country that's just now really being introduced to mobile internet. And uh, obviously, as we can see, where e-commerce is still at such an early stage, uh, and consumer, uh, online consumer culture is still very premature, th there are significant opportunities. Um, also in countries uh, where you have very large populations and you have things like significant amounts of traffic and logistical issues, um, the opportunity to solve very difficult problems such as traffic uh, are really unique opportunities and that's why companies like Pathao are really exciting to us. Uh, but you know, Bangladesh is, is a country that's very early on in the ecosystem and you know, while there are significant opportunities, there's still obviously a lot of, a lot of risks with that and there are a lot of um, things that you have to be cognizant of uh, while or when you do invest in, in Bangladesh. Yeah, like investing in Bangladesh is very different than investing in anywhere in the world. Like I, I never invested in Africa, so I don't have like a idea like how that market works. But in Bangladesh is very different. The way the, our like education level for our entrepreneurs, like the, the way they understand the legal systems and everything, is actually very different. Uh, then the next phase is like. Uh, it's very important to understand the ecosystem for an investor because like if we are not patient, uh, we, if we do not have the, the dream, big dream that we are actually investing in, it, it could actually completely jeopardize the whole ecosystem. So how do you see the startup does after they get the investment, like how the next, uh, next phase of growth happens? So I think just as Wahimbai was saying, um, there tends to be a culture of uh, of, of this being a sprint rather than a marathon, not just uh, for the startup entrepreneurs, but also for the investors in these sorts of businesses, uh, similar to what they've seen in their own. And I think that that's more detrimental to this to this ecosystem than anything else. You know, this is very much a marathon. You know, in Silicon Valley globally, uh, typically seven to eight years is, is, is the amount of time it really takes to see some sort of result on your startup investment, whether that's success, whether that's IPO, whether that's liquidation, change of control. Uh, this really is a much longer term uh, investment opportunity in an ecosystem like this, uh, very similar to anywhere else in the world. And I think that for us to see success here, uh, we have to see that investment in the long term, uh, obviously by the investors, but also by the founders. You know, the founders really have to have conviction in their ideas. You know, the biggest issue, that the, or the biggest concern I see is that entrepreneurs come to me with five different business ideas, saying, I'm working on this, 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 and this. You know, they're lacking focus. And, you know, and there's so many problems with that. But, but the most important problem is that if they don't have conviction in their idea, how can they expect investors to have conviction in them? You know, and, and to take that one step further, you know, they're, they're, they're doing two or three things on the side and, and I think, you know, if they're not willing to invest 100% of their time, effort and energy into this, it's very difficult to convince others to, to put money into them because at the end of the day, you're investing yeah, it's, it's in the entrepreneur. The plan B. Sir? They will go to maybe plan B. Sure, right, you know, and, and, uh, you know, and you really want to invest in someone who has no other choice but to succeed.
what do you feel like uh, i understand and uh, i value the this gesture of like uh, investing like full time and like seeing that long term uh, like uh, what could happen in long term but like, what do you feel like how our ecosystem like how our founders are feeling about that like do you see like people really understand about the long term vision i think that some are starting to get it but i think that there's a lot of problems with the with the I guess some of the cultural issues here in the sense that we stigmatize failure too much and and you know in most parts of the world even in Silicon Valley you know we embrace it you know we don't call it failure we call it an iteration you know they even have conferences on failure called failcon uh, you know that embrace failure but here you know we stigmatize failure so much and that scares people and you know they think okay i'd rather keep my you know my salary job rather than take this risk fail and then be embarrassed and be an embarrassment to my family and so until we make that change and until we convince entrepreneurs that it's okay to try and fail we're not going to be able to have significant advancements in the ecosystem the way you see our ecosystem is growing right now like what are the main things like you try to actually look when you are seeing a, like new business opportunities when when you are actually uh, meeting someone who is actually coming up with a new business what are the main things you want to actually see and what are the main like lackings you see all the time the biggest thing is Ego? most most entrepreneurs unfortunately think their business is worth far more than it's actually worth <laughs> and that's a difficult They're overvaluing themselves oh yeah overvalue themselves overvalue their business and you know product market fit and uh, you know and understanding market sizes is great but unless you can actually execute on that and actually deliver on that it's difficult for people to be convinced because bangladesh has got very very high risk too you know and and so you, what you look for risk adjusted returns and so when you look for those you have to get significant discounts to valuation to justify it and you know when you see a startup We founder that has no experience data. that says oh my company is worth 100 crore taka you know and and i have 55000 taka in revenue this month is difficult for you to take them seriously and so ego is a big concern here you know and uh, i think that you know if we can if we can get a larger number of more rational entrepreneurs i think that would really help the ecosystem and uh, like do you see like our ecosystem is actually growing like how do you compare our like whole ecosystem like 3 years back and right now yeah you know i think what's important to understand is i think the ecosystem is growing i think that there are some really cool companies out here what's what's really nice to see and and to be honest with you is there are com there are companies in bangladesh that are doing amazing things and these are companies that you or i or even as a matter of fact basis have never heard of before but they're just doing That's amazing things part. and solving solving complex problems that we've never heard of because the ones that are too busy working don't have time for this <laughs> sort of stuff in terms of like idea and like idea coming into like real business so uh, are you for actually at the beginning or saying like sometimes we actually value the idea more especially to the founders they thinks like their idea is very unique and we should actually pay for his idea so we all know like it's all about execution right idea sure. means nothing if you can't actually execute i mean ideas are a dime a dozen right you know yeah. i mean that's the expression like everyone's got an idea and i can assure you that most ideas that i've heard i've probably heard a dozen times not just in bangladesh but around the world and it's not unique to me it's it's unique to everyone you know i mean these ideas to solve problems are so common but it's about how you execute to essentially solve those very complex problems another like uh, interesting thing i want to actually talk in detail if uh, we if you have time like uh, three of your main investment like gnr then like chal dal and also the patao you don't just invest money you also invest your time because i know like you are cfo in in official title for gnr right, right. and you also you are also like heavily involved at the beginning uh, for chaldal i don't know like how you are involved right now and for patao this actually high growth is served so like why you need to get involved that much like uh, when i invest in any silicon valley company i don't need to actually get involved if i am in the board maybe i just have to attend the board meeting so like why is this like uh, why so, you are doing uh, this for all of you i think sometimes stuff? to be very frank with you you don't have a choice i think that uh you know if we're going to if we're going to make an investment sometimes you require a higher degree of hand holding um and i think you also want to help companies grow and provide uh 
resources that are transferable. You know, we've invested globally, and so the skills that you know, or, or the the lessons that we've learned are transferable. And if we can transfer those over to you know those best practices over to the to you know to the companies in Bangladesh, uh, and the founders can take advantage of that, so we can you know uh, expedite growth or expedite you know the the, the product build. Um, why not? You know, I think sometimes it really helps build a better build a better company. Thank you.